in this video, we're going to talk about what a science is. Science is a systematic method of inquiry. Another way of saying this is science is a way of asking questions and then answering those questions. There is a series of steps known as the scientific method of inquiry. Scientific knowledge and discoveries are obtained by following these steps. So science is a way of asking questions. There are several parts to the scientific method, but it always begins with observation. So in discovery science, simply just observing and recording your results is an important step. There are many ways to make observations, either by using our senses or by using specialized detection equipment. Now these observations lead us to ask the question, why? Why does it work that way or why did that just happen? By observing nature and the natural world, we develop questions. These questions may have to do with common occurrences and events, such as going outside and seeing that the sky is blue or seeing birds flying overhead in a V-shaped formation as they're migrating. And so we can ask questions, well, why? Why is the sky blue? Why do birds migrate like that? Yet often these questions will be inspired by events that seem different or out of the ordinary. Once we have a question, the next step is to make a hypothesis. So what is a hypothesis? There are several ways that this can be defined, but really our hypothesis is our answer to that question that came from the observation. You may often hear a hypothesis defined as being an educated guess. And that's true, but something that's hidden in this definition that we may not always see is that our hypothesis is based on knowledge that we already have. Now I'd like to emphasize this concept, the difference between a hypothesis and a theory. Now you may often hear these two terms used synonymously, but in science they are very different. In science, this theory is a hypothesis that has been thoroughly tested and has not been disproven by extensive amounts of experimental data. So someone's guess as to why something happens, that is not their scientific theory. In fact, an individual can't have a scientific theory. A scientific theory is something that's held by the scientific community because it's a hypothesis that has been tested over and over again and continues to be valid. Very different than a hypothesis. So don't let people convince you into thinking that a scientific theory is the same as an untested hypothesis. A hypothesis that hasn't been tested yet has no persuasive value to a scientist. So it's great if you have an idea and are ready to test it. Make some predictions, design some experiments, test your hypothesis. But while it's still just a hypothesis, that doesn't really have convincing value. So how do we test a hypothesis? Well, we need to make a prediction. So predictions are based on the hypothesis. If our hypothesis is correct, then we would expect to see a certain result when a particular event occurs. That's the typical format for a prediction, usually this if-then statement. 
These predictions then need to be tested to see if our hypothesis is correct. This is where we get to experiments. Now, experiments are designed to test the predictions which are based on the hypothesis. So it's important to realize experiments are not accidents. Now, if an accident occurs and you make an interesting observation and it leads you to a question, that's great, you're starting the scientific method. But experiments themselves are designed to test predictions that are based on your hypothesis. And so spending time to develop your predictions will lead you to better experiments to test those predictions. Good predictions lead to good experiments. So, you've conducted your experiment, then what? Well, upon completing the experiment, our prediction is either proven correct or incorrect. Now, if we're correct, usually we then make another prediction. Using our same hypothesis and plan another experiment. However, if our prediction is incorrect, we need to rethink our hypothesis. Now you may think, if we have to rethink our hypothesis, we're left with nothing. But we've actually received new information. Our new hypothesis should include this new experimental data. And as we change our hypothesis, we expect that we're getting closer to the correct answer. So as a very simple example of the scientific method, imagine you have a flashlight and you turn it on and it doesn't work. That's your observation, the flashlight isn't working. So your question is, why? Well, based on what you already know about flashlights, they normally need a power source. So you think maybe it's the batteries. That's a common reason why flashlights won't work. So your prediction, if your hypothesis is that your flashlight isn't working because of the batteries, your prediction would be if we change the batteries and turn the flashlight on, then it should work. Our experiment then becomes just that test. We take out the old batteries, we put the new batteries in, we make sure the batteries are facing the proper direction, we connect everything back together, and we flip the switch. One of two things is gonna happen. Either the flashlight will turn on or it won't. If the flashlight turns on, then our hypothesis that the batteries were the issue was correct. Now we could make a further prediction if we want that if we test these batteries using a battery tester, they should be low or at least some of them should be low. And it all depends how much farther you wanna go down on that path. But let's say instead you turn the switch on and it still doesn't turn on. After you've confirmed the batteries are incorrectly, well now what? We know that it's not the batteries. Could it be that the switch is broken? Could it be that the light bulb itself is burnt out? Those are two new avenues we can pursue now that we've established that it wasn't the fault of the batteries. So that's one example of the scientific method in use. Now something a bit more biological. In the 1990s, there were massive fish die-offs in North Carolina. Not just one or two fish, but thousands, tens of thousands of fish dead on the surface of these lakes and streams. And many different people saw this. Many people had this observation of this massive fish die off, and they all had the same question, why? Well, there are multiple different hypotheses. Some people blamed pollution. Some people blamed pesticides or, or chemicals in the water. Some people blamed birds because there are these big open sores on the sides of these fish. Some people thought maybe there were insects in the water somehow harming the fish or algal growth. Well, it turns out that there is a researcher in the area, Dr. Burkholder. She and her associates work with these freshwater fish in their labs, and they had seen something similar in their aquarium when these microscopic organisms called protists were present. So many different people made the same observation. Many different people had the same question, but they all had differing amounts of information and familiarity with this. 
so Dr. Burkholder and her associates hypothesized that protists were the cause. That is their hypothesis, so then they needed to make some predictions. If these fish are being killed off by protists, then we would expect to see increases. In protist numbers at the time of the fish die-off, that's something that they could test and see. We would also expect that if we add these protists to an aquarium containing the same type of fish, then it would cause the death of those fish as well, another test that they could perform. So these are the predictions, which could be tested by experiments. So this is the scientific method. This is how the scientific method works. The scientific method is a great way of asking and answering questions, but it's not the only way of asking and answering questions. There are limits to the scientific method. The scientific method is useful for studying the natural world. However, there are some things that the scientific method cannot do. The scientific method cannot make moral judgments. Now you can use evidence from the scientific method. You can use scientific facts to support whether you think a decision is morally right or morally wrong for an individual or for a society, but science in and of itself cannot make that determination if something is morally right or morally wrong. It can tell you the consequences of actions, but not its morality. Likewise, the scientific method cannot prove or disprove faith-based beliefs for individuals who aren't relying on evidence or repeatability to make their decisions. Lastly, science cannot determine personal aesthetic values. Science can't tell you what color is the best color. Science can't tell you what the best type of music is. Science can't tell you whether a painting is is your favorite or beautiful or ugly. That's outside of the realm of science. In our next video, we'll be defining ethics.